because so one thing about um, Amazon, for instance, and Tubi TV, for instance, both Amazon and Tubi TV, you can put your film on there without a film aggregator. All projects, whether you have 200 million or whether you have 20 cents in your budget, is about problem solving. Yeah. So the, the part of your journey we're really, really dying to hear about is okay. So now you have a finished product. Right. And so now you've got to get it distributed somewhere. You've got to either get it shown on the big screen or you've got to get an aggregator or a streamer interested in it. Yeah, so absolutely. What was, that, what was that part of the journey like for you? So um, I got post-production, but I'm going to skip that part. So here we go. Um, Distriber was a film aggregator. I, um, I, do, do, do they know who, what a film aggregator is? Yes, they do. Okay, cool, cool. So Distriber was a film aggregator that I used, and that was like one of the most popular film aggregators for indie filmmakers at the time that I used at Distriber. I don't know if you've heard of them, Professor Williams, but there was this massive scandal. So I was one of their last clients. Um, so I think you guys can learn from this. Um, I paid them, how their business model worked is that I paid them $1,600 um, to uh, basically get my, you know, get my film on their, you know, on their, on, in, their, in their funnel so that they can then, um, you know, get it through to iTunes and Amazon. Right. And you had to pay per platform. You had to pay to get it on there. I think it was like an additional like two hundred and fifty dollars each platform. Well, um, first of all, you had to pay their their fee, their sixteen hundred dollars, just to be, like you say, in their funnel. Just exactly like one of the films that they're they're then going to generate business for. Then they successfully sign you to a platform, and that's the, an additional two hundred fifty dollars from you. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So right. that was, and I'll tell you why it's a nightmare, <laughs> because what happened in the end, it will, will, will kick you, it'll kick you in the face, and it kicked me in the face. Um, so I finished, you know, because there are sta there's quality standards that you need to meet that they will send you. You, know, you need to have a trailer, you need to have, uh, you know, poster, uh, three kinds of different posters and three kinds of different formats. Um, you need captions. If not, they'll charge you a caption fee. They'll upcharge you for a caption fee. In other words, your, your whole movie has already had closed captions. Exactly. The, okay, gotcha. So it has to have closed captions. And what there are caption websites that you can just go on and you can pay them like maybe like a hundred bucks and get all that get all the captions for your film done. And if they do it wrong, then you can just go in there and edit it and then send it back to them and say, hey, I'm gonna edit these, and, you know, edit the SRT file, I believe. Um, and just like, you, you can just use that for your film. But anyway, Distriber. So what happened was um, I had it on iTunes and Amazon, and I think the first month um, on iTunes and Amazon, the Brotherhood did like $500 because I sold it for like, f uh, I had it for $5, and I think I had it, no, 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 I had it for $12.99 actually. Had it for twelve ninety nine, okay. and I had like I reached out to a lot of people. I you know I was like, hey, I got this movie out, blah blah blah. I put you know stuff on my YouTube channel, stuff on Instagram, and stuff everywhere, and you know five hundred dollars worth of sales. And what happened at the end? They were going bankrupt. And so guess what happened to my sixteen hundred dollars plus my five hundred dollars in sales? Went to the bankruptcy attorneys, huh? Completely gone. Completely gone. So I was in a fight with Distriber trying to get my films removed off those platforms because if it's not removed off those platforms by that film aggregator, the film aggregator is going to be making money off of your film eternally off of that platform right. Right. because you can't have the same content on the platform twice. You're like, no, 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 but, but, but I'm the filmmaker. No, 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 no. The film's already on there. <laughs> so I was in an argument with the distributor trying to get my film away from, you know, off of iTunes and Amazon because, so one thing about um, Amazon, for instance, and Tubi TV, for instance, both Amazon and Tubi TV, you can put your film on there without a film aggregator. Good to know. 
Um, okay. So I would recommend exhausting your options, going through as many of those platforms as possible, trying to get your film on there by yourself so that you take the profits immediately after it's watched. That it's just you to them. It, it simplifies the process completely because if not, the money's gonna go to the film aggregator first and then whatever the film aggregator feels like giving you, they'll give you what's left of, you know, the, or, or, or what, you know, what they say they're gonna give you according to their fee structure. Um, and, and, that's, and we discussed a little bit of that from the traditional film world before you came on and that if you were in the legacy theater market, you would put your film through. We just finished looking at some box office charts right. uh, for this particular weekend that passed. And so you have a gross number, which is how many people actually bought tickets. Right. But then right after that, there's a split between yeah. how much the theater actually keeps of that revenue mm -hmm. and the distributor gets. So in this, in this market, it's probably 50-50. Yeah. So 50, 50 cents of every dollar stayed at the theater, and the other 50 cents goes to the distributor. Mm -hmm. They normally would take 30% off the top as a fee, yeah. and they would charge you expenses, which in the legacy world would be prints and advertising. And then, if there's anything left, you might see something trickle into your pocket. So <laughs> what, 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 are the, what, is the, what are the fees that you're being charged if you go, say, directly to Amazon? That's a great question. You're working with a distributor, a distributor or an aggregator. So As you mentioned there's a fee just to be part of them, mm -hmm. part of aggregators, you know, funnel or network. Then there's a fee for each platform. So not now that you, not you for Film Hub Amazon, though. What's, what does what is, what is the fee structure look like there? Not for Film Hub. For Film Hub, there is okay. no entry fee. So they just take a part of what your film makes. That's why they're like trending as the number one film distribution platform for like um, indie filmmakers. They're free, like free, quote unquote free, right? Um, so they just make whatever, when, when your film makes money, they make money. So I believe the okay. split is 80-20 with them, but okay. you can go check on their website just to double check. But if you went straight to Amazon, Bezos is what I, I call Bezos a pirate. Because <laughs> he takes 50% of sales. Okay. 50%. Amazon takes, <laughs> Amazon takes 50%, which is like, holy crap. iTunes is different. iTunes 70-30 split. Okay. So 70 in your favor, 30% goes to iTunes. But mind you, I never got to see that money because iTunes, you need a film aggregator to go through to get to iTunes, right? So okay. different platforms you need film aggregators to actually get to. Um, like, for instance, Netflix is a huge one. Uh, Hulu is a big one. And let's say, you're talk let's say you want to get into Netflix or Hulu, right? Um, so that's that, but I wanted to get to this. If you wanted to get your film into Netflix, it has to be filmed on pre-approved cameras, right? And this is the camera I'd recommend to, you see me pointing at it, <laughs> to indie filmmakers. It's the Panasonic S1H, and I assure you, it is one of the cheapest cameras on their list. And it yeah, shoots 4096 by 2160 in precious, beautiful 4K, Cinema 4K, with 400 megabits per second. You get beautiful image quality. And I believe the camera is only like $3,000. Some of you might be like, ugh, 3000 but like the other cameras are, I assure you, like much, much worse. Uh, much, much, much more expensive. Um, so you have like the filmmaker, and then you typically go through the film aggregator. Uh, like you, you know, you talk to Film Hub, for instance, and then you can get your, you know, you, you you submit all your materials to them. Then you can get your film, let's say, on iTunes. But Amazon, you can do it by yourself. Netflix and Hulu, you need to prove the product in the market before you go to Netflix and Hulu. Unless you have Will Smith in your movie, or Leonardo DiCaprio in your movie, <laughs> or, you know, or any kind of, you know, big highbrow stars, then you can just go directly to an agent and say, hey, you know, like, you, you know, you, and then they kind of make things happen magically. Um, but you need to prove the market, um, and the film aggregators will help you do that if you've sold enough units or enough, if you were, or if you have enough eyes on your work. 
then you can then look at Hulu and Netflix. And you know, let's say you're doing fifty thousand dollars in sales. You know, that's yeah. going to get Netflix's attention. They're going to be like, hmm, "What's going on here?" It's, it's going to, you know, so that's going to get the film aggregators excited. And then you go down to, you know, and that's how you get to your customers. Um, and so, for instance. I took the per unit sales off of the Brotherhood and I put it on Prime. So the Prime structure is different. So okay. obviously you get way less money. Um, but if you, so the key now is, is that it kind of changes how you market the product because there's different things that I recommend for, for marketing. Um, there's this product that I have, it's called the Clover Key. It's basically a camera plate screwdriver and a, in a bottle opener at the same time. Uh, so it's like a thing that you put on your keychain. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, it's probably in my room or somewhere. Uh, where's, oh, here it is. Um, stand by, sorry. Um, <laughs> it's this product here. So okay. I essentially learned a valuable lesson from making this product. I went on CAD and I, you know, I made a product and then I, you know, I went to you know, manufacture and things like that. So like that process taught me an important lesson. When I went to Facebook, you can put on ads, run ads on Facebook and Instagram and drive traffic to okay. whatever product, including films, right? And so my recommendation is when you have per unit sales, it can work well if obviously the money that you're putting into it is less, <laughs> is, is, is less than the money that you're making, right? You wanna make money. Right. Um, so you can just kind of test it and test it with different markets. I think there's, some, there's something called Facebook Pixel that kind of um, tracks, it tracks like what type of customer is actually doing well, is actually converting. And the more customers you convert, the more people are likely to, <laughs> the, the more people are likely to, to, to buy it, right? So it's like, and so it kind of makes it easier as more sales go through that process. Um, okay. And so th th that's one thing that I recommend per unit uh, when you're doing it. You could just put on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok ads. Let me see if I have, let me see. Yeah, yeah, pay for ads on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Um, and that, that, if you're selling it per unit. Now, if you're not selling it per unit and it's on Amazon Prime, it's a bit tougher of a road because then you're making a few cents. So what do they, they give you a portion of the pay-per-click or how, how are they aggregating your revenue on Amazon your, Prime? Your revenue for Prime is, I believe, so, okay, this is going to be, this is going to hurt, this is going to hurt a lot of people. Um, so let's say, for instance, you're getting 6,000 minutes watched per month, right? Okay. Um, and that's how it's broken down on their website, by minutes watched. That'll equal to, if you're lucky, and that's between the UK, you can access two territories for free, uh, the UK and the, uh, obviously United States of America. And so out of those two territories, and this is without marketing, like let's say your film is doing 6,000 minutes, right? Um, you're gonna make maybe like a dollar or two every month. <laughs> So it's it's not it's not very lucrative without the per unit sale, and okay. and that's okay. why that's why I highly recommend that you um, build your audience while you're making your movie. That's the biggest thing that I could recommend to anyone is while you're making the movie, be think behind the scenes, posting it places, or having your team post it places, so that you're building an email list to then convert sales later. Um, that's that, obviously that's one of the many strategies that you can use. Um, you can start a YouTube channel, start an Instagram page. You know, I think TikTok is, TikTok is popping off. TikTok is very new and it's getting, making a lot of people money, making a lot of people a lot of money. All these platforms are making a lot of people a lot of money and they're just converting their products and they're at a very rapid pace. Um, and it just depends on how big you grow your audience during the production process.